Hey all, this is Val here with another Epic 7 video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Diane, the limited summon that came up last year. All right, so I was lucky with her. Let's talk a little bit about limited summons. So limited summons are different than banner summons. Limited summons offer you a 120% chance. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What they do offer you is... If you have not pulled the limited summon in 120 pulls, your 121st will be the limited summon. In this case, mine was Diane. I had to go all the way to 120 and then get her as my 121st. And let me tell you, getting her that way or any limited summon does not feel good. It doesn't. You don't get it and you're excited. You're like, oh man, yeah, look what I got. You're like, get me out of this banner. Just get me out. And that, that's how you, that's how you feel. You don't, there's no happiness. There's no joy. There is just, I'm done. I mean, that, that's, that's how it is. I'm going to be honest with you. That's just how it is. That's how I got her. So what's important to note about that is you do actually have to summon a hundred and twenty times. The unit is not automatically deposited in your box. You must make the hundred and twenty first summon that will give you the guaranteed limited unit. And that's how I got her. That's how I got Diane. That's how a lot of people got her, unfortunately. But she is very worth it. And let's talk a little bit about that. So first, let's look at it. We've got, she's Ice, and she's a Soul Weaver, and she's Jimny. Now, Jimny, Jimni, however you want to pronounce it, um, that tells you what kind of upgrade materials you're going to need. Soul Weaver obviously means she's a healer, and then she's of the Ice element. Let's take a look since I have her at Friendship 10. We can take a look at her actual, all of her expressions. So we'll click here. And there we go. There's normal. Upset actually looks upset. Sad does look sad. Laugh does actually look happy. I would, I would actually label that happy. Bluster still looks, uh, this looks surprised. Like what the heck? Special one looks sad. Special 2 looks like a combination of, I can't tell if she's happy, like she's crying because she's happy, or is she just like surprised and thought it was funny at the end? I don't know. I think I'd have to go with like, ah, uh, normal or upset, like because, I don't know, special 1, I mean I like that, but it looks sad, I don't want sad. And this one, I, I can't determine which it is, so let's just go with normal, let's just go with normal. All right. Then let's take a look at her skills. Light of Judgment. You acquire one soul when you use it. Emits a ray of brilliant light, increasing the caster's combat readiness by 12%. Effect doubles when caster is buffed. As you can see, I did pick up two here. So I have plus 2% to combat readiness. So this would be default 10% and I also have 5% damage. Why this is good, this will help you cycle turns to make sure she is buffing as much as po as humanly possible. I do want to go all the way down to plus 5 here so I can pick up the extra 3% combat readiness. And when she's buffed, which should be all the time, she will have 30% combat readiness right there, ensuring that she is always shielding and buffing you. Her skill 2, Blessing of the Goddess. You acquire two souls when you use it, and it's on a three-turn cooldown. With the Blessing of the Goddess, covers all allies with a barrier for two turns before dispelling one debuff. Barrier strength increases proportional to the target's max health. Now, you can see here, I went down to the one-turn cooldown, and so it's lower to three turns. By de default, it's at four turns. Now, I do want to max skill this one. This barrier is OP to say the least. It absorbs a ton of damage and it cleanses. Now, what's important to note is see here how it says it applies the barrier first and then dispels. So if you have a blocks buffs, even if it's a blocks buffs that you could normally dispel, first the buff is applied, then it's dispelled. So this would not get rid of block buff because of that order. Now, this is very, very, as I said, worth max skilling. It is incredible. It's good in PvE, PvP. It's just good everywhere. It's good in raid. Just, just max it. It's 100% worth it. It, it. And I'm gonna when we get to Artifact, there's additional benefits to this and as well to the combat readiness in the first skill. 
So now let's take a look at the third skill, Saint's Prayer. Acquire four souls when you use this, and it has a four turn cooldown. A miracle of the goddess manifests, increasing attack and critical hit resistance of all allies for three turns before increasing the caster's combat readiness by 50%. You can soul burn this, which consumes 20 souls, and it decreases the skill cooldown by two turns. So basically, if you soul burn this, you can always have it up because that's going to lower it to two and the shield lasts for three. So as soon as it expires, you can buff it again. Now, as you can see, I do have plus two souls because by default, you only get two souls when you use it. And then I, I have the minus one turn cooldown, which it's normally a five turn cooldown. This is 120 zillion percent worth max skilling. It is worth it. Do whatever you have to do to get this max skilled. The increased attack and the critical hit resistance is crucial in PvP. Um, now with other strippers and things there, this can even help you out more. Because if you don't want to use her barrier, uh, say you're using her on PV on arena offense, then you can still at least buff uh, increase attack and bust critical hit resistance. And the reason why I say that is because now we have Kisei, and Kisei will do 70% more damage if the unit is shielded. So Kisei is, you see her on uh, on arena defense, and it might be wise to either replace your Diane or if she's one of your stronger units to not even use uh, skill two. So let's talk about artifact and why I said it's important to get these skill cooldowns and combat readiness. So right now, because I don't have the one I want, which is Rod of Emeralis, um, I am going with Margaret's Tome. What this does is this gives me 24% combat readiness when using a skill that does not attack enemies. So think about this, right? So she is going to be buffing constantly because of this. She's also going to be buffed and she's going to get 24% as mine is built. Now 30% at max level, at a plus five level. But she's going to get 30% combat readiness just for doing this, which is going to definitely get her to do her big buff. She's going to do her big buff. She's going to pick up 50% combat readiness. Because I'm using Margaret's Tome, she's going to pick up another 24% combat readiness. And immediately already, she goes directly into her buff. She's going to buff. And then she's going to gain again another 24% combat readiness. Both of these are going to be on a cooldown. She's going to use this. And because she's buffed again, you're going to get another 24% or at max or at plus five skill, 30% combat readiness, which means she's going to be able to cast these again before they drop off. So it is very, very critical to pick up the minus one turn here, the minus one turn here, and then also to pick up the combat readiness. This will allow her to just continually cycle the cooldowns. Now, what's important about this is while this build is good, it could be maybe not the most optimal. The reason why is there is Rod of Emeralis. Rod of Emeralis, what that does is every time you use a non-attack skill, you'll heal. Now, because you're going to be using this so often, even taking away the 24% combat readiness here, you're still going to get 30% combat readiness on top of healing someone every time you cast one of these two abilities. If you do have Rod, it is again crucial that you pick up the minus turn cooldown to both of these abilities as soon as possible. What this allows you to do basically, and some people might disagree, but you can put Angelica on the back burner. You can take out Destina if you run a dual healer comp like I do. And Diane can be your one-stop shop for all your healing needs. Now, there is one more build I do want to talk about that uses kind of the similar mechanic that I'm not a fan of. I know I've seen a few streamers use it, but it just doesn't have the... Uh, that just really gets me excited, to be honest. And that is using Celestine for your artifact. What that does is every time you use an attack ability, it heals. However, because you want to make sure that she's buffed always, so that way she can pick up the combat readiness on skill one, she really isn't casting her attack that often for it to be useful. While it will help to keep some of your team up, when using Celestine, that is one of the few times you really don't want to pick up the turn cooldown on either of these two abilities because as soon as you do that you just decrease her healing output so if you need her to be a healer celestine might not be the best option but it could work if you are running another supporter or you have a defense buff or something like that so that way you can hold out until her regular attack is up again so she can start healing your units 
I would say I would rate these with Rod and Margaret's Tome kind of tied and Celestine being an alternate option if you have neither of those two. Now, let's take a look at my um, stats here. You can see she's got a little over 1,100 defense, 1,400 attack, or excuse me, 952 defense, uh, 1061 attack, 11K health, 179 speed. Uh, you can see everything else really kind of doesn't matter for her, really. Uh, effectiveness doesn't matter. Effect resistance does. I did go ahead and put some of that on her. You can see I went with speed and uh, health. Here's a look at the stats. If I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause the video and then you can check out each piece and what it brings to the table. Now, when you awaken her, this is what she picks up. We'll click it here. So on her third awaken, basically Saint's Prayer gains the critical hit resistance. That is what you get when you awaken it and then you can see because that's really the big one here is the other thing she picked up her last one she picks up more health she picks up speed here effect resistance which is always good for a soul weaver health which is good and then effect resistance again i'm almost there i just need uh nine more nerves which is really getting on my nerves these things i thought uh the the one catalyst for uh, Yuna were a pain. Uh, Blazing Souls, these are these nerves are a lot more painful. A lot, lot more painful. All right, and that's really it for her. I am a huge fan of her. Um, my goal is once I pick up Rod to actually drop Destina from my group, and I'm just going to go with her and Requiem Roar. Requiem Roar's heals when it kills something is just phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal because most bosses have adds. So you can kill the adds typically a lot easier than you can kill the boss, thus giving popping her 15% heal. And in some cases, you do need to kill the adds anyway. So as you're doing that, you're getting constantly healed. As the boss summons more units, he's basically saying, hey, here's more things to help heal you and keep you alive so you can defeat me. So once I pick up Rod for her, I'm going to drop Destina from that group. Maybe pick up something like, uh, and probably put Kise in, but I do need AoE attacks, so I might actually go with um, uh, Yuna, or I'll go with Clarissa. I'm not sure what that team's going to look like, because De uh, Destina's whole point in my group with her is just to make sure we have enough heals. But now with Requiem Roar, I'm pretty sure I could replace her now, and it would be just as effective. But I want Rod there just to be sure. Just to be sure. I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to go yet, but uh, we'll find out once we're closer to it. Um, you can see that from these stats here, so I forgot to show this or talk about it. I went health, health, and speed. Speed's so important that I, I just had to go speed boots. There, there was no other option in my mind for her than to get speed boots. But if you want, you could go um, HP, HP, HP all the way down and then just pick up speed in your substats. But she is going to be a little on the slower side. So you want to make sure you can take, if you bring her to Arena, you can uh, survive the onslaught of the team getting first move. If you can do that, then having her be a little slower isn't going to matter much. Because even if she goes first, having the crit resistance up, if their other team gets their whole skill lineup to go off, is going to help you and ensure that or help ensure that you are survive that onslaught. So that's why I said building her fast to me, there really is no other option. Now the bad news. The bad news about this is, so we have yet to see, even in Korea, we have yet to see limited summons be offered again. So we don't know if she's ever gonna be back. We have no idea. She. This could be the last time we ever see her. So if she doesn't, my condolences to all those who didn't start right when the game came out to pick her up. If she does, she is worth doing whatever you have to do to get your 120 summons to pick her up. She is that good. If it's you have to save you know, and, and sacrifice newer banners and wait for her to come up again in a limited summon, you do it. Because she is that worth it. Unfortunately, I can't tell you if that's ever going to happen. though. I really don't know. I don't know if she's going to be back. I'm not sure if anyone does. I guess really only Smilegate and Creative know that answer for sure. 
Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful or if you know of other builds you like to run Diane with, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. Also, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Also hit that notification button so you know when I have new videos available. As always, thank you for watching. And all you dudes and dudettes out there, stay frosty.